Hi class, I wanted to make sure that you got from last night's Tableau discussion what I wanted you to get, and it was a little hectic and I sort of lost track of the time and didn't show everything, so here's a short video to recap some of the things we uh, talked about last night. First of all, here is a Tableau visualization that I think does a fairly decent job of showing how the number of incidents rose in our fake data here for our shoplifters. Uh, I've got uh, the two years, 2017 and 2018, I have bars for each uh, month. And remember last night I showed uh, a line graph for this. And then um, I have a headline up here, number of incidents rose in 2018, which reflects one of the takeaways from this. Another takeaway could be the way that the pattern month by month changes or stays the same. So how did I actually get to this? Okay, I'm going to go to a new sheet here. And the first thing that I did, and I'm uh, just going through the, the steps that I've already done here. So I moved the sum uh, or the number of incidents over onto the rows, and Tableau automatically gave me sum. Uh, notice that when I hit this uh, triangle over here, I can change the level, what type of aggregation it does. So all of those are available. Particular average is another one that would often be used. So I've got the sum of the number of incidents there. Then I've dragged year onto the rows, so I now have the two years uh, on top of each other here. And then I've dragged the calendar date up here. And temporarily this has changed this to a dot plot, um, because right now in our marks card we still have uh, Tableau deciding what type of graph it's going to show us. Uh, so let's go ahead up here and change this to month. Now up here we have months without year. And down here we have months and year. So if I go month and year, uh, Tableau has now decided that I want to see a line chart, and it's given me all of the months in sequential order. However, if I go back to the top month, then it's put them on top of each other because now we're comparing January of each year uh, side by side. So then here I change this to a bar chart. Then I took year and I moved it to the color tab. And then I took the number of incidents and I moved that to label. And so again, it automatically chose some. And then I uh, double clicked in here, got rid of the sheet name here, <clears throat> and put my headline here. And that's basically how I got to that particular graph. So by uh, manipulating what's on the rows, what's on the columns, what type of graph you're doing, what sizes you want, what labels you want, you know, for example, I could take these labels off here. I could say, do not show the mark labels. But then I could go to the last bar here, right click, and say, um, mark label, and say, always show. And I can do the same down here, and I could say, mark label, always show. So now I've highlighted just whatever that last label was, and I could go back and double or click in here, and I could say that, you know, I want the font to that to be really big. Okay, so that would highlight what the last most recent month was as far as the number of incidents. So there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, power that's available in Tableau. Next, I want to show you how uh, we could look at the local versus the national shoplifters. I'm going to go to another sheet that I've prepared here. This is slightly different than showing you a pie chart. What I've done is I've shown the per capita offenses by whether or not people are local or national. And then I've said local offenders commit slightly more offenses per capita than national ones. So the question is, how did I actually get to this graph? And you can see up here I have something that says aggregate offense ratio. Uh, if I click in here, I can see the whole thing. I don't know if I can expand this out, but I can capture what's in there. I think um, it says offense ratio by radii. And so I have to see how did I actually get to that calculation. So the first thing that I did here was I said I'm going to define a calculated variable called offenders by radii. And I'm going to open that up and edit that and show you. And that's what I showed you last night. So I said we're going to fix the um, uh, distinct count of offenders. Okay, and here I did not have my offender ID, so instead I used the vector picture info, which is also a unique uh, indicator. It's like a natural key for the offender dimension. So I counted the distinct number of those, and then I said, but 
allow us to drill down by the fence radius. So that's going to be either la national or local. So I would ordinarily get a count of all of the people who had committed offenses, just, you know, one each. But here, this allows me to differentiate which type of radius they are. And just to show you that in action here, if I take my offense radius and put here, and then my offenders by radii, radii here, I get the same numbers that we were looking at last night. So uh, to get back to this sheet here, the second thing I needed to do is then to compare this number of offenders with the total number of offenses. And so to do that, I went back here and I said um, offender ratio, offense ratio by radii. So again, I created a calculated variable and I said sum up the number of records. That is just the number of offenses. I could have also used this number of incidents variable in here. Divide that by the sum of the offenders by radii. And as we'll discuss, in order to aggregate up when you are doing a calculation that is not at the lowest level of granularity in Tableau, you need to use the word sum here. So some number of records divided by some of the offenders. So this is the total number of offenses by the individual number of offenders. And so I will click OK. And then that is the variable that I've moved in here. And when it says ag up here, it means to say that this is a variable that is aggregating up above the lowest level of granularity in the data. So uh, just to show you how I got to this, I'll uh, start a new sheet here. I will bring in my offense uh, radi radius here onto the rows. I'll bring my offense ratio onto the tableau, or I could also just say put it on columns. If I put it on columns, it automatically makes a graph for me. Notice that if I put it on the table, uh, then it automatically, it keeps it as a table until I tell it what kind of graph I want. This is kind of convenient if you want to make a table with multiple measures before you do any graphing of it. So I, at this point, I could then choose a bar chart with the show me. I will uh, then add the label here of offense ratio by uh, radii. And notice, though, that Tableau is not showing me the mark over here, the uh, label. That's because it doesn't have room for it. It automatically adjusts when and when it does not show labels, depending on how much space it has. So that can sometimes be uh, something, a hassle that you have to work on. So I worked on all the formatting of this sheet until I made my fonts nice and big. I changed the scale down here. Uh, I added a headline up here, and so I was finished with this one. I want to finish by showing you one more illustration of how granularity plays a role, and the understanding of granularity is essential in order to make full use of a package like Tableau. So what I'd like to do is make a histogram that shows how many incidents there were for each perpetrator. And for this, I've created a measure that says incidents by perp. So let's take a look at that one. So I, I'm right clicking and saying edit, and I'm saying fixed. And then I want to count the number of incidents, but I'm going to count them by each individual perpetrator. And remember, my vector pi picture info is like a natural key, which is unique for each perpetrator. And so in counting the number of incidents, I'm counting the number of times that each person has uh, committed an incident. I, I think I could also say sum here, and it would be the same because number of incidents equals one. But in any case, I'm counting the number of times they have done something uh, by the vector picture info. So if I were to then take this um, vector picture info, so that shows us 616 marks. That's the total number of people that I have in the database. And then I'm going to move over my incidents by perp. And you'll see that it's anywhere from one, two, three, four, or five incidents. If I sort in reverse order here, I'll see the highest number is five. So I'm going to get rid of that um, just by saying clear sheet up here. And then I will uh, make a bin out of the incidents per perp. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to say create, <clears throat> create bins. And I'm going to say make the bin size one. 
and say, okay, now what's going to happen is I'm going to get a bin for each level, one, two, three, four, five offenses. And this is going to go up here. This is a categorical variable here. And when I bring it over, you'll see I have one, two, three, four, five. And now if I count the incidents by perp, I bring this up here. I see that I have 55 people who committed five offenses, 188 who committed four, uh, et cetera, et cetera, going down to one offense. And uh, I can go ahead and graph that as a bar. Um, and then I can bring over my incidents by perp to the label. So I suggest that this would be another useful way of seeing the extent to which uh, people are actually committing the crimes. However, we have a particular interest in the offense radius. What happens if I put offense radius up here? Let's put it on the rows and see what happens. I get two graphs and I get um, a distinction between those who were the national people and those who were the local people. The question is, are these the right answers or not? If we go back to one of our earlier sheets where we simply have the number of offenders, we see it's about 616. If we go back to this sheet, it's immediately clear that the numbers are not adding up to the right numbers. And that is because we're actually taking a sum. Uh, and so for the people who have... Uh, so I'm not sure why uh, sum is wrong, uh, but... I know that if I change this back to count, and I change this back to count, I'm going to actually end up with the right number. Let's uh, see if we can verify that. 219 and 152, that's 371, and that would make about 455, and that's about uh, 455, uh, 84, 44. 503. How is my math? I stopped and used my calculator. Turns out my math is not as good as it used to be, but this does indeed add up to 503, and so we have the right result. So the point here is that with local and national, we could go ahead and take that incidence by perp, and we could divide it up uh, by those uh, that different dimension and still get the right results. Let's take one more example here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a blank sheet and I'm going to again uh, get my incidence by perp bins and bring over the incidence by perp and uh, let's see I know now that I need to change that to be count so that that's the the right counts that we have here I'm going to make that into a bar chart. And let's move the count over. I'm holding down the control key and dragging that down to label. And let's uh, make that the way that I like it. I'm looking at it that way. So I've got the right number here. And now what happens if I drag year onto the rows? So I now get two separate indications by rows, the ones for 2017 and the ones for 2018. The question is, do these numbers add up to the right totals? This time I stopped and used my calculator. The top one adds to 355, the bottom one to 476, and the total then would be 831, which we know is not possibly right. So what happened? And I think you'll realize that what we've done is we have double counted some of these people. If, if someone committed a, an offense both in 2017 and 2018, we're counting them, um, and so should we be counting them? The answer has to be no, because uh, here we're saying that this perpetrator committed five total offenses, but then what we're saying is that if one of the offenses was in 2018, but four were in 2017, we're still putting this person in the five uh, uh, five uh, committed incidences bin when in fact that person was in the one incidence bin in 2017 and then moved up to the four incident bin in 2018. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our incidence by perp and edit this and right now this says that this is summing up the count regardless of 
this dimension, the date dimension, and it's saying it's going to give us a fixed number at that level of granularity. So what we need to do is drag in the date here, and then Tableau wants you to put in a comma. So now we're saying that it's possible that we can take this count, we'll fix it, but for these two dimensions, for the offender dimension, which by the way, notice had the offense radius in it that we used in the previous example, and for the date dimension now, it allows us to drill down. So I'm going to click on OK, and when I click on OK, you're going to immediately see these numbers change. And they changed in a way that I did not expect them to change. And that's because I used calendar date and I intended to use year. So let me go back and edit this one more time. And I'm going to take calendar date out because I think the Tableau doesn't know that we want to use year when we say date. So maybe it was getting down to the level of day there. So I'm going to pull, uh, pull year in, which is another reason why it's good to have something like a date dimension with different representations of the date. So I'm putting year in. I'm going to click on OK. And now we've gotten back to the situation. So we see that in 2018, we actually only had one perpetrator who committed five full offenses. In 2017, we didn't even have any five offenders. We had two four offenders, and we had 19 um, three offenders versus 41 three offenders. Now, if you were stopping the video and adding up these numbers, you might say, wait a minute, Professor McHenry, these numbers are exactly the same ones, uh, but at, when added up, this is 355 and this is 476, as you just showed us a minute ago and you said was wrong. But what's happened is the distribution of those numbers has changed. So my interpretation is that in 2017, we had 355 perpetrators who were committing offenses. In 2018, we had 476 perpetrators and this shows the number of incidents, uh, you know, the bin uh, number of people who committed each of those bins worth of incidents. So it's complicated, isn't it? And this is why uh, once you get beyond a very basic level in a package like Tableau, you need to have a solid understanding of dimensions and uh, granularity in order to be able to get the right result. And a lot of times, when you're presenting to your users, you only get one chance to get the right result.